What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. I'm your host, Albert Fig, back for another week of Everything Hypocritical. And we are in studio solo episode. And it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I was able to do a good solo episode. The last two episodes I did were guest oriented, one via Zoom and one three person, one that was uh, for the Cinco de Mayo episode. So, first things first, going into all this. Let me just recap everything that's been going on with the podcast and the episodes and specifically the last two or three. Actually, I forgot about the one with Sammy. So the three episodes, because it's been a minute since I've been able to talk like this one on one with y'all. So the let's recap the Sammy episode. So my homegirl Sammy, I haven't kicked it with her in a minute. This is before even COVID because, you know, COVID locked out a whole fucking year and basically wasted a, a year of our lives. So uh, I, didn't kick with, I didn't kick with her all of 2020 and even furthermore with that. So it was good. It was good to just catch up and meet up and go over everything. And, you know, I wanted her on in the podcast because my main focus when I have a guest on like this is to bring on genuine dope people that I feel like need to be highlighted and have a lot to offer and i feel like everybody could like you know gravitate towards them or fuck with them heavy you know what i'm saying so i hit up sammy to be on so if you haven't checked out that episode already it was manifest with sammy we drank we reminisced we talked about some crazy shit and we finished off with a quick hitter so do yourselves a favor and go back and watch that one and after that i had this was the zoom episode the bonus episode the bonus episode that came out that following monday last week monday that one was with moody banks moody banks was is i should say an r&b slash soul artist originally from southern california who is now living in austin texas and doing her big things out there working as an internship inter uh intern damn i can't say that shit internship at at a, at a studio and she's putting in her work solo as an independent art i want to say i don't know if she's independent i think yeah, independent artist getting her um reps in and you know getting that daily grind of you know trying to make it out here in this crazy world we call music or entertainment or in the creative sides of this shit but moody banks man if you haven't already checked out that episode please please do yourself do yourself a favor go back listen to it or watch it whichever one is better for you but that episode was one of my favorite ones because we got to like connect on a, on like on a, i feel like at least i connect on a deep level when it comes to talking about music you know not just her music but music in general the the drives behind music the focuses and all her music and you know what separates her from i guess the uh the everyday music or genre of music that you're listening to right now and you know she's trying to bring back the old school the old school feel of music you know what i mean that soul that feel you know what i mean like that that feel good music and you know the type of music that's going to put you in a mood you know moody banks so if you haven't checked that one out go check that one out and um yeah that was done via zoom and i think that was only my third zoom episode you know i was supposed to have of course like everything else i was supposed to have you know a lot more and you know some of them fell through and we're trying to work on that to getting it rescheduled so yeah that's just you know that's all part of the grind i'm not complaining i'm just saying that's all part of the grind and then following up with that we had our sync with a mayo episode now let me tell you guys about this one. So, some of the behind the scenes stuff. Okay, so originally, oh shit, my hands are really dry. Sorry about that. Um, kind of random. So, originally, the Sync with the Mayo episode was supposed to be one that was going to be uh, uh, a special one because I was going to have a, a brand new special segment incorporated in the episode. And it was going to be very entertaining and really accurate to what single the mayo is and that fell through and the not the backup plan necessarily but it was even even going to be way better because not only were we going to incorporate this new segment excuse me but we were going to have the segment done at a whole a whole new scenery it's supposed to be this different location and we were going to get treated to you know a lot of good perks and it was going to be a collaborative effort between myself and the other entity and um you know things were looking like they were on the upside and then looking like they were going to be pretty good but in the end it just didn't work out so we ended up well i ended up having to you know adjust on the freaking on the flight and we ended up having it right here 
and I wanted to decorate it a little more, but we kind of, you know, made the, the best situations what we, what we had. So that, the Cinco de Mayo episode didn't really, like, it just, it didn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It didn't meet the standards, not because it's anything on our fault, but I had a lot more envisioned in it that I wanted it to uh, turn out. But nonetheless, it was a great episode. It was funny as shit. It was entertaining. I had my homie Anthony and my homie Josh. So again, if y'all haven't checked out that episode, do yourselves a favor. Go back, listen, or watch because it was very entertaining. Uh, we were very hypocritical. And it was, yeah, one to rem remember. And when that's going to be really doing good. It is actually doing pretty good, but I swear it's going to be doing good in the longevity of things. Like it's one of the episodes where you, we're going to look back, you know, a couple of months from now. And you can still get a laugh and a lot of the stuff that we talked about then is still, you know, can be relevant to the things that we may be talking about either right now or in the future. So check out that episode. But yeah, those three were just like back to back to back, man. I was able to get them all done and, you know, it was a grind with everything. And then I know originally, you know, talking about everything in the podcast, it was supposed to be one episode, well, intermittent, intermittently changing. So I was supposed to have a guest on and then a solo one, a guest on. And a solo one, you know, and switch off, you know, uh, have it like a domino effect going on and on and on. And originally, the reason why I was going to have it be like that is because I didn't want to burn myself out. And I didn't want to run out of guests so fast in a certain time frame, you know, because this isn't a sprint. You know, this is a marathon race. Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. R.I.P. But this is, uh, you know, it's you got to think of everything in the long run. And the way I, I envision this is like I'm not just doing this temporarily or just doing this. Um, you know, just to knock the shit out really quick and just, you know, half-ass everything. No, I, I want to have longevity. I want to put the, you know, the exact amount of time and the the effort and everything in anything I do like I've always have. But I also wanted to have enough time to adequately give it, you know, the time and the, the longevity of, of it, you know, if that makes sense. So that's kind of why my plan was like that going forward. So when I had three back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back guests, it's not because I, you know, shied away or, de or deviated from my original plan, but it's more so because when you have an opportunity to get them, those artists like that, or a bonus episode in, or uh, an in-guest studio, you kind of can jump on it, you know? Because these solo months, I just sit here for like 30-some minutes or like maybe maybe 40 or some shit like that, you know? But it's pretty, for, for me, it's fairly simple and I kind of just go off the rip talk about everything hypocritical and shit that's going on in my life so that's why i don't mind having a few of them on like that and coming on like this but i'm gonna get back to the schedule between like of the solo ones and the guest ones so yeah i just wanted to recap all that stuff that's going on so good more good good stuff coming on and it sucks that that cinco de mayo the stuff that we originally had planned fell through but there's gonna be some how should i say some some more attempts and some more opportunities that may or may not rise but i'm still trying and i still got a lot of stuff locked in what else uh man so one of it like one thing that i made a, i made a post on it uh like a few weeks ago but i was able to shout out my my podcast and my brand and talk about it on air live from the breakfast club power 106 one and it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not It's not like I was actually on, you know what I mean, as an interview. It wasn't like I was on booked as a guest. It wasn't like I was on in person talking about that and, and, and you know, like um, being able to promote everything like you would normally see with, you know, other interviews that they have on their platform. But for me, it was more so like a moral victory because I would have never thought of myself as being a person that would call in and try to get in the spot and, you know, to be able to talk to these people that I've been listening to literally every day for the last 10 or 10 years, I think not nine years would probably be more, a little bit more accurate, but overall 10 years, that was a more victory in myself. And the only thing I kind of fucked up on was I got like, uh, I was nervous. I didn't think I was going to get on at first. Right. I mean, I was like, cause you know, th the time difference between here and New York, I mean, yeah, you have to like, there's a three hour time difference. So, there's a certain time you got to get up in air, you know, so when you include having to, you know, get up early as it is for work, but still have a regular, no, I don't have an, I, at my job, I have a full time, I'm still work full time, but it's not a nine to five, you know, but it is uh, a, a daily job. And so to have that, and then to still have a, 
a baby, you know, it's not even one years old yet, an infant, and trying to juggle that and then still trying to get on those times, it's a mess at times, you know, it can, and it can get all over the place time-wise and you drink a lot of coffee, which I've talked about in previous episodes, and sometimes it's zombie mode. Sometimes you hit and sometimes you miss. But yeah, so I was like adamant. I was like every fucking, every day, 3 a.m., just getting on it, alarms, getting up, calling, calling, trying to do this, trying to set this up, calling from this and calling from that. And um, so when I got through, it wasn't like I initially got through right away. It was like on the first try, boom, you know what I mean? It was like, got on, I tried, I tried, I talked to someone and maybe there was like a 20 minute window and I was waiting and then there's a bit of a delay and a lag in it too. So when you finally got on, it's like, what I mean, what I got on, it was like a quick, you know, moment of silence. And I was just like, oh shit. I was like, is it me? Like, am I on? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'm the one that's on. So I spoke and then when I heard myself, I was like, oh shit, I am on. So I kind of caught myself off guard and you don't, you like, you only get about like a 60 second slot, you know what I mean? To kind of, as they say, get it off your chest or talk about whatever it is that you're going to talk about or bring up, you know? And I had a 60 second window and I swear like that shit, that 60 seconds flew. I'm talking about that shit flew fat, way faster than what I thought. By the time I even got done, I'm um, not even done by the, by the time I got to, you know, bring up the podcast, I was already like in the end, I was just like, oh shit. And then they don't tell you that they're, they, they're going to hang up on you or click on you as you're talking or you're just finishing off whatever, whatever it is. They're saying, all right, you know, have a good one, peace. And then they click on you, but you don't get the delay. I mean, you don't get the time to respond right away because of, of that delay. So I'm talking and then I just hear the clack and I'll, you know, click. And I'm like, shit. And, I, and then, you know, I was, I was excited, but at the same time, I was just like, oh, fuck. I was like, I forgot to mention this. I didn't even say where to find it or, you know what I mean? Or how they can listen to it and all this and this and that. But I was just like, hey, I did something, you know what I mean, that I normally wouldn't do and then something that I probably wouldn't have done had I not started this. So it was a moral victory in myself, but it was also uh, uh, like a learning curve or a teaching lesson lesson because it was a ripple effect, actually. So for me, it was just like there was a small little bump of like, maybe there is a chance of this being success successful. Maybe there is a little gain of, of momentum and um, of, of steering in the right direction and, and a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, a, a bit of uh, excitement, you know what I mean? You get that little rush because then you, you maybe were down in, in the slopes and maybe weren't feeling too good about this or things weren't looking too optimistic. So you get that little burst, you know what I mean? You're just like, okay, damn, like maybe this is onto something, you know? And like I said, in the grand scheme of things, it's not like I'm fucking bringing in like crazy ass numbers and like, all of a sudden, everybody wants to tune in. But it was one of those things where I was just like, man, if I can do this, y'all motherfuckers can do this shit too. You know what I mean? If I can do this all the way from California and, and it didn't take nothing but time and effort, that means that y'all can do this. Not even just that, but just something in general. If you just put the time in, you know what I mean? And you stay dedicated to something like that. Or if you want to do something different, you know what I mean? And you just have to put the time in. And actually motivate yourself to get out of your comfort zone. Get out your box. Do something. That's Get out the box? That sounds sexual. Shit. But you know what I mean? I mean, it's just like, get out of the comfort zone a little bit. Reach a little bit. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to go out this, you know? Don't be afraid to take this quick left. You know what I'm saying? Three rights make a left. Does that make sense? Fuck no. Just bend the grass. Bend the grass. Okay? So, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a, you know, moral victory on my end. And... I've been trying to get on again. I'm not going to lie because I'm now the, the way my brain works and the way I operate, it's like, nah, now when I get back, I'm going to do it. I'm going to one up it. I'm going to do it better. So I've been trying, I've been trying and I've been trying and I've been uh, unsuccessful. And maybe that's just whatever higher power being like, hey, bro, don't get too greedy. Now we gave you, you know what I'm saying? We gave you your spot. Don't get too greedy. Don't get too greedy. Anyway, uh, pretty exciting week. Time is flying. Um, time is really flying. Matter of fact, it's flying so fast that we're, we are already mid-May, you know, basically. And what does that mean? That we're already halfway through, almost basically halfway through 2021. Crazy. And I'll tell you what, I just gave my son his first haircut. I, I cut his hair. Yes, I did. I didn't want to go to, uh, like a, Salon. I didn't want to go to a barbershop. I didn't want no one else to cut it because selfishly, yes, I said selfishly, I wanted to be the one to give him his first haircut because 
no reason other than I just wanted to be the one to give him his first haircut. So here's the thing about cutting a baby's hair. First of all, it's not easy. Not easy. Not easy. Especially when they're only a couple of months, you know, and they don't stay still. They're going to move. They're going to cry and all that, you know, stuff, which is, you know, pretty much accustomed and I'm pretty sure you already know of. But I cut his hair. And it felt like, I felt like fucking Edward Scissorhands on the way. I was just like, you know, cutting that shit, like, you know, I was getting down. But it was a cool feeling and definitely one for the books. And yes, we saved, we saved his hair. We saved the little pieces of hair. We got the sandwich bag and we're going to keep it in a little thing. That's going to be like, you know, for when he gets older, when he can see. And I even recorded. I got two videos. I got two videos that I wanted to record and that I can take uh, still images of and I can save it. I'm going to make sure it's backed up and backed up and triple backed up. And when he gets older, I'm going to show him it of us cutting his hair. So that way we can either do one of two things. He's either going to laugh at us. He's either going to get really angry or he's just going to look back and be like, that's how you guys look. Because by the time he gets older, we're going to be old and we're not going to look the same. I'm going to be I'm going to be fat and out of shape. And, you know, I'm already halfway there, but that's neither here or there. I'm trying. OK, I'm trying yeah cut his hair and um little man's getting bigger you know little man's getting older you know yeah that the, the first year is going by quick and you know it is true what they say that you know it's it that first year goes by like this and it's it's frustrating it's it's trying it's the best feeling and it's uh you know it's all those cliches and all those things you would think going into that first year it is all that little man just took his first 17 steps consecutively and I'm not talking, he ain't a big stepper, you feel me? Like, he's not taking the steps like, he's not walking a marathon. You know what I'm saying? He's not, he's not walking from the bathroom to the kitchen to go get a beer or something like that. He's just taking, like, you know what I mean? The little little 18 step, little, little baby steps, stopping, get a little pause, and then takes another step like that. But he's getting there. Haircuts, baby steps. And I swear that dude cussed me the other day. I swear to God, I, I feel like... He cussed at me the other day, just one simple word. He just hit me with the, uh, you know what I'm saying? He'd like, his fist went like this, like that, and he was just like, uh, uh, and I was just like, do you really cuss at me right now? Mm. It's 10 a.m. 10 a.m., think about that. Anyway, yeah, so haircuts out the way, the year is flying, and we got some stuff coming up for him. Been busy, been busy with doing all this but also been busy with yard work bro yard work okay i'm not a professional landscaper not at all don't assume that why because i'm mexican you thought that but no i'm not a professional landscaper but i've been busy with that shit and let me tell you that shit is fucking time consuming it's tiring amongst everything else i'm always needing coffee actually at sms kind of a lie i'm not drinking it every single day but that's because I'm trying to build, I'm not trying to build up my tolerance for it. Oh, by the way, if you see, I, one thing I noticed on the previous videos, cause you know, I do all the edits for everything. I see it myself, my face hella oily a lot, but well, I'm not really oily. It's just that it's hot. So I get kind of sweaty. So if you see it or you're watching it, no, I'm not hella oily. It's just that I sweat a lot. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. I'm sidetracking. Uh, what, what was I going to get into? Oh, so Here's the thing that's, that's, that's going on that, that really motivated me that I saw today and that I hope you guys can watch too. So, and I probably should have talked about it at the beginning, but I wanted to get all that stuff out, out the way. Did you guys watch the J. Cole little 12 minute, uh, I guess you could call it opening documentary for the off season on his YouTube, about the 12 minute one? Yo, yo, y'all need to check that one out. Now, the first two minutes, right off top, I knew I was like, oh, we, me and this dude, we're the same. We're one and the same. We, we're thinking alike and thought about everything the same. I have those same thought processes and I have those same, you know, whatever gene that is in his brain, whatever he's thinking, I'm, in, I'm like that too. Now, does that sound a bit narcissistic? Yes, I believe it. But am I, do I think, now, is there some bias to that? Do I think that he's... You know, one of my favorite rappers of all time. Yes. Do I feel like in the past tech decade, he's been uh, top two? I, I, okay, I'll give you debatable top three, but in my opinion, top two 
best rappers in the last decade? Yes. So is there bias? For sure. But there was something that was really telling, and there was something that kind of ignited me even more in my motivation as if I didn't really already have any or I didn't really need some. It just always helped it out a little more. Uh, I've, I've been saying stuff behind uh, closed doors, you know, like off air, off the record, whatever you want to say. Uh, some of my closest people, some of the people around me, I've been saying this shit and he kind of said the same thing too. I'm not saying he copied me. I'm just saying like, man, that resonated with me and I can relate. And in that opening two minutes or three minutes when he's talking to 21 Savage, He's talking about like the thought process and the idea of like why the off season was this and how we got the same, you know what I mean? Like the same motivation factor or the, or the same motivation drive from the warm up, the mixtape that he put out, you know what I mean? And I remember watching him and hearing him talk about all that was literally the same stuff that I was talking about doing before I started this podcast. It was literally just being like, you know, I want to go into all this and go in it like, if I'm in it, I'm going to go in it and pull my, put in my whole effort, like 100%, you know. And I'm going to go out my, uh, again, I always mess up with the words, but I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. I'm going to go outside the box. I'm going to do stuff that I normally wouldn't do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the things that I know I should do that's only going to benefit the podcast. Even if it makes me a bit, like, uneasy, like, oh, that's not me. Or that's not what I, you know, reaching out to a bunch of strangers or, you know, uh, uh, paying for publishing or ads or reaching out for marketers and reaching out to a bunch of, you know, potential sponsorships for advertisers and conversing every, not every day, but conversing with agents and setting up these and building these flyers and, you know, actively being on social media because how important it is. Yeast, you know, that's a big, that's a tall order. That's a, that's a, you know, something that's, you know, understandably required, but it's just like, again, it's something that I'm not normally accustomed to. So, I remember being like, I want to do this. I want to shoot these things. I want to reach out to this and I want to network with this. I want to collaborate with this. And I want to, if this costs more right now, that if, but if the quality is going to be there and it's going to look, look and sound professional, then I'm going to pay the extra for this equipment or pay the extra for this or pay for this or, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to uh, stay up a little bit longer till fucking 12 or 1 a.m. and make sure the edits are good. Um, oh, I got to record at 3 a.m. Cause that's the only, that's not the, you know, the, the baby was going through some shit and he just wasn't having it. And I had not recorded because I got late from home late for work and I got this and that. But I still had to commit to releasing him on the Wednesdays. So I have to get up at 3 a.m. and record at 3 a.m. Cool. I'm fine with that. You know, those type of things. And um, I do all that. And I said all that to, to, to say that when he said, J. Cole, when he had said, like, he doesn't, is he going to look back at all this? And regret some stuff like, oh, he didn't really put in this or he's, or he's going to feel like as if he didn't fully commit to this or he could have done this different or he could have done this or he could have done that. That, like I said, resonated with me because that's exactly what I was saying going into this. It's like, am I going to look back a month from now? Like literally, like, like I could look back in a month and be like, did I not do this right? Did I do this? Shouldn't have, should I have done this? Or am I really putting in? everything I need to do to kind of get it out there to the world. You know what I mean? And so every month I would say, yeah, I do look back and I was like, okay, let's look at all this that I've done. Let's look at these numbers. Let's look at where the direction this is going or how could I improve this episode or this episode was kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Like I kind of was just like the solo ones just didn't really, you know, kind of seem monotone and this and this and that. So how can I improve those type of things? You know what I mean? Or it's just like, maybe I'm like reluctant to like reach out to someone because I feel like, they're kind of, you know, in a bigger platform and bigger than, you know, the stage where they're at in life as opposed to me. And just like, am I going to be intimidated by that? Or am I like afraid of like rejection or to say no? I don't know, but I'm going to make that effort to reach out either way. Just, just to say, Hey, at least I tried, or at least I did, you know what I'm saying? So I'll reach out to these pyre ups and I'll reach out to these people and I have, and they, and you know, of course not a single response back, but that's okay. Because again, this is like, I'm making sure that every, there's no stone that doesn't get unturned. You know what I mean? Like everything is hitting the way I wanted it to do. And I'm making sure that I'm doing every single thing right um, within my power, you know? So that resonated with me right away. And uh, I kind of take my, my closest people and, you know what I mean? Like 
I say that to them too. I try to like make sure that it's infectious towards them, you know, with anything they do. And we talked about it last time on the fucking um, on the New Year's Eve episode. You know, I I kind of I want to like have this trickle effect where if people see me doing this shit, like you know, small dude from San Lucas that's out here, you know, trying to make something out of nothing, apply that same grit and apply that same motivation in anything you do, and it doesn't matter what it is. You know what I mean? If you're just trying to lose weight, put 100% into that. If you're trying to ball and be a baller, go 100% into that. You know what I mean? If you're going to make music, go 1,000% into that and put all the hustle that you can into it. So I kind of just try to make that trickle effect. But hearing that from him, I was just like, damn, that's mm, that shit hit me. You know what I mean? Because I was like, that's me. And now, again, selfishly, I'm sure everybody always thinks something like that. But it was just like, yo, I feel that. You know what I mean? I feel that. So... I say all that to say, I'm basically J. Cole, point two. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm not. But, yeah, so check that one out. And, um, yeah, so it's a, good, it's a good learning motivational thing, and it'll light a fire up your ass. Jesus, that's pretty graphic. But you feel me? Anyway, so, of course, in each uh, solo episode, um, when I wrap things up, when I get done rambling, when I talk about all things hypocritical, I didn't find anything hypocritical this, hypocritical this week other than, you know, myself, because I'm constantly finding everything hypocritical in myself. But, um, yeah, other than that, I like to finish off the solo episodes with something I like to call the quote of the week. Now, if you made it this far, thank you, first of all. But you're also doing yourself a good deed because... These fucking quotes of the weeks are gems. They're gems. A lot of people miss out on them because a lot of people don't listen to them at the end or they don't catch it at the end. But there's some good gems at the end, dog. So let me hit you with one. This week's quote of the week is coming from a person named Reba McIntyre. I hope I said that right. I want to say McIntyre, but there's no A in it. So I don't know. It's M-C-E-N-T-I-R. You tell me what it is. McIntyre. Reba McIntyre, don't sue me. Not my fault. You try saying my last name and get it right the first time. Doubt it. But anyway, the quote of the week is, to thrive in life, you need three bones. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Think about that for a second. To thrive in life, you need three bones. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Now, this one resonated with me because of how fucking true it is you need a wishbone now i'm not the one that made this quote but i'm taking it as the wishbone is something that basically it's like you have to have some type of aspiration goal dream wish anything that you want to call it you gotta have something you gotta have something to look forward to like i said dream a goal or a wish and go after it simple as fuck you have to have a backbone. Life is tough. We get it. Life is tough for everybody. Everybody's going through some shit. Everybody has a history. Everybody has a background and everybody has a story. Life is not always going to be fair. Motherfuckers are going to be rough. Motherfuckers are going to be rude to you and it's going to be a bumpy road in life. But you got to have that backbone. You got to have the backbone to just get with everything you got to do. And lastly, you have to have a phony bone, which is to me basically saying, chill. Not everything is so serious. You don't have to take everything so freaking seriously. Have some humor. Live a little. Laugh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to have a funny bone. You know what I'm saying? Don't be a dick, but it's okay to be funny. So to thrive in life, you need three bones. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Reba, shouts out to you. You want to sponsor the episode? Hit me up. Hit me up, Reba. Ah. <sighs> Yes, that's it. Another week. So tune in for the next episodes. More guest ones coming on. All things hypocritical. More things motivational. And if there's anything you should take away from these episodes is, yo, find something you want and stick to it. Scared? That's good. Remember that post I put on my IG, Albert underscore fig and the podcast, hypocritical AF podcast, Instagram. Anyway. This has been another episode of the Hypocritical AF Podcast. I am Albert Fig. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. Like, share, tell everybody, and spam everybody too. Spam everybody with it, okay? Y'all stay safe. Peace.